Okay. All right, morning, morning. Panelists say good morning. Uh, we are a minute away from official start time. Let us good know morning, where you everyone. are. Let us know where you're all coming from. I'm sure they, our panelists want to meet you virtually. I'm gonna go ahead and go live on our Facebook page. This is being broadcast also on the Remax Integra US Facebook page. So if you'd like to jump over there and join us there, we will be there as well. All right, looks like we are live there. Hello, Facebook. Thanks for joining us. We are about ready to go here. Where's everyone coming from, panelists? What's going on in the chat? We've got uh, Stacy, uh, PA, Antonia, New Jersey. We've got Karen from Burlington. Carrie, sunny space, coast of Florida. Nice. That's great. And we've got a couple of people watching on Facebook. Katie Robinson. Hi, Katie. Thanks for tuning in. Hi, Katie. <laughs> All right. Texas. Hi, Bradley. Great to have everyone. And Dan Bro is on, Skyla. Hi. Hi, Dan. <laughs> Hi, Dan. Thanks for joining us. All right, everyone, welcome, welcome to the Remax Business Builder Series. It is officially start time. We really appreciate you starting your alternating Tuesdays with us. Uh, and we really appreciate that time. I uh, just want a public apology for the reminder that went out last week. There was a glitch with Zoom. So thanks for your understanding. And we're not sure why that went out and said there was a session last week. So this is the the, the uh, series we're having, there's three more, including today. So today we're gonna talk all about managing your business from your mobile device. We've assembled an incredible panel that wants to share and wants to meet all of you and help you be the best that you can be. So officially welcome again, this is the Remax Business Builder Series. My name is Michelle Hoyt. I am Manager of Education and Development for Remax Integra US. And I'm so happy to be your host. I'm also joined by my teammate. I'm gonna have him introduce himself. Kevin? Hi everyone, uh, my name is Kevin Vinzon. I'm the brand education manager for Remax Integra for Ontario Atlantic Canada. And thank you so much for having us and Michelle having me uh, with you here as well today. Great to have you, Kevin. Uh, Kevin and I have been working together since December. He's amazing, he's very talented, he's very techy. Uh, those of you in Canada get used to seeing Kevin. Hopefully you'll get to see him in person someday. <laughs> but um, it's been great. It's been a really great run with you, Kevin. So, so glad to have you and- Thank you. So, ha so happy to co-host with you. All right, so let's meet our panelists and look at all the chatter going on in the chat box, everyone. So uh, look, we're going to start with someone who reached out as a fan of the Business Builder Series, who is not officially part of Remax Integra, but you know what, that's okay. We're all Remax and so we're all part of the same family. So we're gonna start with Judy. Judy, please introduce yourself. Tell everyone all about you, your history with Remax, your market, and anything else you want us to know. Good morning. Hi, everyone. Hi, Remax family. So I'm Judy Chin with Remax Villa. I'm out of the New Jersey area. So we have two offices in Edgewater, North Bergen. But first, I have to thank uh, Michelle and Kevin. I did reach out, but not realizing that I was going to end up on a panel. So I'm really humbled by it. Um, and it's really great to meet Bradley and Skyla, too. So the area that I mainly serve is in northern and parts of central Jersey. Uh, at this point, it's probably seven counties. Uh, I would say anywhere an hour into New York by bus or train. Uh, I'm, I'm proud to be a CRS realtor as well. So any of you that might be CRS realtors, hello everyone. Um, and you know, I think, I think this is gonna be an exciting day today to, to be with everyone. Thank you so much. What's going on in your market? So we were just talking about this behind the scenes, a lot of multiple offers, uh, you know, before you even get a listing up, you know, it's almost amazing. I had one where we tried to schedule an appointment. It was a 30 minute listing fresh on the market and the listing agent said, guess what? We already have an offer. So that's what's happening in the market right now. 
Wow. And just a yeah. little clip, your audio is kind of going in and out. So maybe if you could lean in a little closer. Um, sure. Yeah, that's that's better. I'm sorry. Okay. I don't want you no to, have to lean right into the computer. <laughs> no worries. Want to hear it. And well, thank you for sharing that. So that's pretty common across the country. So uh, best wishes there. All right, uh, everyone, let's meet Skyla. Skyla, tell everyone all about yourself and what's going on in your market, your history with Remax, and if any, any other tidbits you want us to know about you. Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, I'm Skyla, I'm 29, I'm from Connecticut. Um, I've always had an interest in real estate. Um, before I even got licensed, I, uh, my husband and I, we flip houses together and we own rental properties together. So naturally it just made sense for me to get into real estate. So I got into real estate when I was 23. So I've been at it for five years now. Um, I'm with Remax Bell Park. I love it there. Um, I'm licensed in Connecticut, Rhode Island and Massachusetts. Um, and it's very busy over here. <laughs> Similar to Judy, it's always highest and best. It's so crazy over here so, in all three states. Yeah. Wow. You're, li you're licensed in three states, correct? Yes. Yes. Yep. That's amazing. All right. Anything else you want us to know about you? Hobbies, pets, anything? Well, I have lots of cats. <laughs> <laughs> I have three cats, two dogs. Um, I don't have children, so I view them as my babies. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you, Skyla, for being here. We're excited. Ravi, what can we learn about you? Introduce yourself. A lot of you probably know him. He's a social media celebrity. <laughs> and uh, I've been associated with him for a number of years. So we're so happy to have you. Please introduce yourself and tell us all about you. Sure. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Ravi Singh from Toronto, Canada. I work for um, a very fantastic Remax brokerage called Remax Hallmark. Um, I've been licensed now for, well, 16 years. I got my license when I was 25. Um, it's been a tremendously rewarding business. I've fallen in love with the business. Uh, you know, real estate has been something that has been very uh, generous to me and the capacity to learn, to grow, to share, to help, to build a business that I, I love. Um, I run a small team. We're called Connexus Group. So it's not Ravi Singh team, it's Connexus Group. And that stands for Connect, Next, and Nexus, meaning that we connect you to what's next. And your home is not just a place for dwelling, it's the nexus of your existence. It's where you share meals, it's where you make memories, it's where you where you live, right? So I'm very, you know, thankful that. Kevin reached out today about uh, building um, your business on mobile. Uh, I certainly find that there's a lot of, uh, of tools um, and I, I, I appreciate the opportunity to share, but also learn from everyone else who's doing a great job with that as well. Well, thank you. Anything in particular about your market? Uh, what's your average price and what's going on there? So the average price has gone up quite a bit across the GTA. This year, my average price for my team is actually over seven figures now. Um, I remember having a million dollar listing at one time was like, you know, the the, the biggest thing uh, possible, right? And now, uh, you know, our average price is about 1050. And um, this year we are dealing with one month's inventory or less in most of the markets I work with. Um, last night we had offers on a property in Pickering. I was my listing with my partner, Ashley, and uh, we had 16 offers. And we also had a listing um, with one of my partners, um, Sabrina, and uh, she's one of my selling partners as well. And that was a condo and had five offers. So tonight it's my listing and it's my turn. So I certainly hope uh, I can I can at least meet meet the uh, meet the uh, requirements or the or the bar that was set by the girls on the team. Wow, that's incredible. So just you know that really sets the stage, everyone. Just so you know. They're super, super busy. So I can't thank the three of you enough for taking an hour out of your day this morning with us to share with all of your peers. Um, so, all right, um, over to you, Kevin. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, so yeah, today, again, uh, everyone's here uh, about managing your business on your mobile device. So first question, very, very simple. Um, you know, what kind of mobile device do you use now? 
Uh, and how often do you upgrade it? Do you just have a phone? Do you have a phone and a tablet, et cetera, all of that? So really simple question. Skyla, I'll have you start. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, so I use the iPhone. I actually have always used the iPhone. That's the only cell phone I've ever had. Um, I update it every time they come out with a new one um, along with the Apple Watch. I always enjoy wearing that because when you can't, if you're an appointment or if you're with clients and you can't, get to your phone, you're able to, you know, see that alert um, and just know that you have to get back to that later. But yeah, I find the iPhone very easy to use, easy to navigate. So I'm sticking with that for now. Very nice. And, and I love that you have that pairing with the Apple Watch because I have one myself and just being able to get your notifications on your wrist uh, when you can't pick up your phone uh, is really, really great. Um, Ravi, how about you? iPhone, um, I've had an iPhone for at least 10 years, uh, probably longer. I'm an iOS guy, I'm an Apple uh, environment. Um, I used to work actually for IBM for a while. And um, like, I remember having the very first RIM pager, right? I don't know if anybody remembers those. Uh, so I've always kind of been you know, in love with tech, um, but I mean, Apple's just, it's, it's cleaner, it's cooler, it's nicer, it's funner. You know what I mean? I just, I'm an Apple guy. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, and Judy, how about you? Uh, I, I agree. I'm also an Apple fan. Uh, iPhone. I won't even tell you what version, what generation I'm at right now. <laughs> I told myself I'm not going to upgrade until I learn all the features that Judy, iPhone sorry, offers. Your, your audio is going in and out again. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry you. about that. That's Thank right. you. Much better. No, so I was saying that I'm, I'm not going to upgrade my iPhone until I learn all the features that's available. Uh, to iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> Would it be safe to say none of you are the ones that camp out at the Apple store waiting for the latest and greatest? And <laughs> okay, Maybe Ravi's like, wait a minute, I do. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, the next one that I get, I want to get with the three, um, the three lenses. Three cameras. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like especially some of the agents when they're sharing, um, you know, video of their homes, it's really cool to see, uh, you know, how those three lenses take in the video a little bit better. And one other thing, storage, like, mm -hmm. I feel like we do so much video, so much photo, so much, um, you know, content that next, next phone I get, I'm going to get like the largest storage possible. Yeah. Never have to worry about filling it up. And, and yeah, Ravi, to your point with the three cameras, it's, it's amazing what anyone can really do with this mobile device in their pocket. Yeah. You know, the great, uh, great photos, great videos, all of that. It, it's, it's basically like having a professional camera in your pocket, which is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. I know we're going to talk a little bit about apps and there's this yeah. whole world of like video editing and all of that. Like I, I, I leave that to the pros, but definitely you can do a lot of stuff on your phone. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, is, is great for just the quick shares. <laughs> all right. So um, I don't know if Michelle my is. Camera, oh. My camera disconnected. I apologize. I don't know what's going on, but that's OK. Michelle, do you want me to move on to the next question? Yeah, or do you, you can have take it? the next and work on my technical difficulties. Thank you. No problem. No problem. OK, so uh, next question uh, in terms of with your mobile devices, you know, walk us through a typical morning uh, or even, you know, do you. Yeah, in nighttime, do you have your mobile device by your bedside? Some people like to have that, some people don't. Um, and you know, when you first wake up, what is sort of your process um, uh, that you do on your mobile device? Uh, for this one, Judy, we'll have you start. So, yes, I am. I am one of those people that have the phone next to me <laughs> at night. But I do have a cutoff. I'm up pretty early these days, maybe around five thirty or six in the morning. Um, I find it's a little quieter in the morning. I don't know if you guys are early birds as well. Um, so I'll admit I'm, I'm on Instagram. I do my meditations. Um, Kevin, you saw me. I was on LinkedIn already this morning. <laughs> and so are you. So um, basic apps like that, I'll go on Mac Center really quick. Um, pretty, but I, I do a lot just with the phone itself, right? So I, I, I love Google. I can't even talk about Google enough. Google Calendar, Google Forms, Google Drive. Um, you know, so 
that that's kind of how I use my uh, morning. Very nice, very nice. Uh, Ravi, how about yourself? Um, you know what? I do have the phone next to my bed, and um, you know, I, I I do check it quickly in the morning before I start my kind of morning routine. Uh, but I don't actually make it work um, until after I've kind of got the routine with my kids going. Um, we are in a state of lockdown in Ontario. We're homeschooling. We're working from home. We're doing everything from home. Um, so you know what? It's usually them first, and then you know I'll get to the day's work probably around nine o'clock. Yeah, yeah, and and yeah, with with of course with the with the lockdowns and you know to your point with the kids being at home. Yeah, there's you know you have this routine built in, and then of course then comes business. So. Totally understandable in the in the state that we're in right now. <laughs> yes. And uh, Skyla, how about yourself? Yeah, so similar to everybody else, I, I check my phone first thing in the morning. Um, I definitely am one of those agents that have it right next to their bedside table. If I didn't, I don't know if I'd be able to get any sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but I have started to, you know, put the do not disturb on like a little bit after 11. Um, you know, I mean, my, I tell my clients to text me, so I always try to get back to them as soon as I can. But um, first thing in the morning, I do similar, similar to Jody, I use um, a Headspace app for just a quick meditation. Um, and then I kind of start my day with my emails and um, my, my calendar. I have a to-do app that just reminds me what I made the night before with what I have to get done for the day. So but yeah, very first thing, yeah. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing, guys. Uh, and Michelle? I'm back. <laughs> so yeah, that sounds that sounds pretty typical from all the all of your peers that I talk to and even myself. I tried to be one of those people that would leave it in another room, use a real alarm clock every night, but I'm right there with you. It's just always, always with me. I actually have two phones and uh, people make fun of me for that, especially my friends, but anyway. <laughs> Um, so, all right, so let's talk more about apps specifically related to real estate. And one of the things that a lot of your peers are wondering out there or have asked me or asked Kevin or one they're wanting to know is how do you use your apps? What particular apps do you use that generate business for yourself or generate leads or help you prospect? So we're going to start with Judy on this one. Judy, do you have any particular apps or tricks that you do with your mobile device that help you generate more business? So I, I have a couple of them, but I have pared them down a little bit. Um, I still, I'm still a big fan of social media apps, right? So uh, Instagram kind of caught me off guard. A lot of business off there, um, even agent referrals. Um, I'm a huge fan of MailChimp as well. I don't know if you folks use that. You could, you could literally edit a newsletter and create a newsletter online. Uh, so I'm a big fan of that. Uh, Facebook is another one, but, but I have to tell you, even as simple as Google, again, I, I, I love Google. Google is also a great uh, tool that I use. Um, another one that I've started to use that I really like is Cloud CMA. I don't know if any of you have used that as well. That's in the U.S., but yes, okay. it is, it's a very good program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, anything, what about RPR? Is that one of the ones that you've used, utilized as well in the US? I have you, yeah, I, like I said, there's a long list. I have used RPR. I think, you know, there's nothing more powerful than the, your MLS board, but I've used MLS with RPR. Um, it's great, I think, for, to accompany your listing presentations. Um, it's really polished, really simple to use. If you're out, mobily you're out with a client you could really just run quick um, comps for them as well so I think it's really user-friendly yeah okay. now are there anything any particular things you say if we could take a little deeper dive uh, or mm -hmm. scripts that you say on social media or what what exactly do you do when you send it to your clients whatever it is whichever app it is like your newsletters or what works right so, you know, believe it or not, old-fashioned email works. Um, another app that I use that I have on my social and you try to put it everywhere you can is Linktree. So for today's uh, Business Builder Series, I, I added the Facebook Live for us. Um, again, really user-friendly. You can just go on your phone and add it, copy and paste. Um, so that way you're not, you don't need to always tell people, 
you know, use this, use this. It's sometimes it's also in um, my email. So if I do a home buyer consult or a sales consult, this is where Google would come in. I use Google Forms to create a home, you know, a home buyer questionnaire or home seller questionnaire. So that way, before I have an appointment with them, I have an idea of what they're looking for. So again, I have that everywhere that I could possibly <laughs> to put. Um, it's hard to remember that sometimes, but you know, I try to use that to make it a little bit use, more user friendly, not only for the client but also for myself. To you know, to manage the the people that are reaching out. Right. I like that you brought up Google because if, if you, none of you are doing this, and I think a lot of you are, go, have the app downloaded for Google Drive, Google Forms, Google Sheets, uh, Google Docs, uh, because like Judy said, you can get to it from anywhere. That's awesome. Right. Thank you. Right. Ravi, what about you? What are your favorite prospecting and lead gen apps? So specifically for lead gen and prospecting, Michelle, um, I do a lot of work via Instagram. And uh, you know what, I just find that a lot of people in my database, a lot of people in my sort of target demographic, um, that's a great place to connect. Uh, and for me, it's not just about content or, you know, like me posting, but uh, we have a mandate on my team. It's 10 conversations a day with 10 people. Uh, so there's four of us. So that's 40 conversations a day. I hit that every day via Instagram DM. So, you know, people share their lives. People are documenting everything that's happening that is um, part of their uh, story. So to connect with them and to, you know, be the voice of real estate, um, especially sort of downstream because you've developed that relationship, it's literally the easiest place. Now I will mention um, in my sort of business model, uh, we are permission-based. Right. And what I mean by that is I don't go talk to strangers that have no uh, desire to, um, you know, interact with me at the time. Uh, there is a relationship, at least at some layer, which can be then deepened through, um, you know, social media interaction. Uh, so that's my like key pillar of my business, uh, like 10 conversations through Instagram every day. And quite honestly, like I could be putting my kids to sleep at nine o'clock and literally just sorry, putting my sleep kids to sleep at 7.30 or 8 o'clock because they're young. No one heard that. Um, you know, talking to people for half an hour is very, very um, um, built into to, uh, a work-life balance routine. Um, and it works really well. The other thing that uh, I have just app-wise that I use um, on my phone that is lead gen and prospecting is BombBomb. Bomb. So BombBomb Bomb gives me a read receipt on emails uh, Bomb Bomb has a great sort of um, uh, sort of tracking system, and I find that uh, when I can deliver um, messages via email, sometimes that's a little bit better than text or WhatsApp for um, business, just because it changes from instant messaging and, and sort of real time back and forth to you know what, let's get business covered and then let's move on. So I'd say those two for lead gen, lead gen and prospecting are, are two of my key uh, tools. Amazing. And, and, I, and I know with, with BombBomb too, um, it's getting more and more popular because, you know, just the fact that you can send those video emails, you know, it's, it's, it gives more of that personal touch. They can see your face, uh, being able to communicate with that as well. And to your point, having those analytics of, you know, the open rate, um, uh, how often they're looking at it, which is, uh, again, a, a great thing for you to, to be able to see. Uh, so thanks for sharing, Ravi. Okay, I have just one thing to mention about BombBomb. It can mm -hmm. be a phenomenal tool if you are, you know, building like lead funnels and focused on online marketing and, you know, you're trying to drive people towards an appointment. That's not my business model. I mm -hmm. think it's tremendously, you know, more capable for an even bigger scalable business through um, a high volume lead and lead conversion strategy. My business is, I always tell people, especially the, the salespeople who are trying to sell me leads, I'm not in the business of lead generation. I'm in the business of client satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And, you know, leads are great, but I'm more interested in clients, right? And I just... You know, that's just my sort of model and, and it works well for me. Yeah, yeah, thanks for sharing. Uh, and lastly, Skyla, how about yourself? 
Yeah, so similar to Ravy, I spend a lot of time on Instagram. That's really my main area that I try to focus on. Um, I, I don't reach out to people like he does, and that's a really good suggestion because I just never thought of that. Um, but I do make sure that I am active on it at least several times throughout the day. Um, I don't think there's one day that goes by where I don't post something. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like with Instagram and social media, it's easy for people that feel comfortable to reach out to you. You know, people, especially certain generations, that's just where they spend most of their time. Um, so I like to focus on that. People, you know, you do Instagram stories, you do Instagram posts, you know, stories, people can privately message you instead of, you know, commenting on a page and having everyone else see it. So I get, you know, a lot of leads that way with people just asking questions or asking for other agents, looking for referrals, that kind of stuff. Um, I use Facebook too. I feel like that's a different type of audience around here. So I try to take advantage of both. Um, but yeah, mostly social media for me in that aspect. Now, Skyla, with Facebook, uh, do you have just your Facebook personal page or have you set up a business page as well on Facebook? So I do have a business page set up. I honestly don't use that too, too much. Um, mm -hmm. I find I don't get a lot of engagement on that. Whereas in my personal, I, I really only use it for real estate. So, you know, yeah. Instagram is completely, you know, real estate based where Facebook, I do a little bit of personal, but mostly business. So I, I tend to focus more on that instead of the you like my Remax Bell Park Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, thank you. And for our peers watching, what's great about these tools like Facebook, like Instagram is it's free. It's a free tool that you can download. You can sign up, create your page uh, and everyone has access to it 24 seven. And that I, I think is the beauty of it uh, where it's sort of working for you. Uh, even when you're not, you know, when you're sleeping, you can't work 24 seven, but your pages are still up there for everyone to see. So it's a great thing to be able to, to have and utilize and really, again, create to, to help elevate your business, which is great. So thanks for sharing. Uh, uh, Ravi, yeah, yeah. Just, just one quick thing on Facebook, just speaking to Skyla's point, I never had much traction with like a business page. I, w I, I figured it was something that I needed to do, so I did it. But about two and a half years ago, I started something called um, our secret clients only VIP group. We call it our Connexus client family. And um, you know what? That has become like um, almost like a neighborhood group, right? It's like, hey, mm -hmm. what's everybody doing for takeout tonight? You know, or um, <laughs> like, and, and you know, you start to see like the connections happen between uh, uh, your clients, right? Like um, someone said mm -hmm. on that group, oh, does anybody know someone who can help me get a reservation to a restaurant? And just so happened that another client of mine, uh, his friend was a chef, right? So wow. uh, a, a VIP, seek, like almost like um, secret group is almost like it's, it's like exclusive. So clients like to be part of it. Whereas a business page, I just found myself begging anybody to, to click <laughs> a like for a long time. Right? Like, review. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you, Ravi, for sharing. Um, and I'll, I'll go on with the next question here. Uh, so we've talked about apps for um, generating leads and prospecting. Now, how about apps for productivity, uh, productivity uh, and scheduling? Uh, what apps do you use to, to help sort of organize yourselves uh, on a daily basis there? Uh, Ravi, I'll have you start with this one. So my team and I, we have a WhatsApp chat. And um, it's basically where, you know, you can get to me at any time as part of my team, or you can get to our administrator, Alicia, who is basically, you know, we're just the puppets and she's kind of the puppeteer making everything happen all day. Um, so, I mean, that's very key for productivity. Um, we're all running our businesses, but to get to each other, that's key. And then uh, G Suite, so Google Suite, right? So you have, um, like we have our entire database there called our gold mine. And we put a check mark next to everything once we've done our proactivity gen. Um, we have our income tracker. Uh, we have, you know, all kinds of stuff on our drive. And um, like, like Michelle said, and I think Judy, it's available all the time. You can be, you can be on the beach in the Palmas and you can just, get what you need off your phone. Exactly, exactly. 
Thank you, Ravi. Uh, Judy, how about yourself? Sure. So, you know, I've talked about Google. Same thing like Ravi. Uh, use a lot of the Google form, the drive, uh, Google Maps to get around, um, you know, working with clients to figure out how to go from A to B and C quickly. Um, shockingly, I also, like I said before, I upgrade my iPhone. I want to understand all the different tools that's available within iPhone. So I've been using Notes a lot as well. Um, even though I use Photofy, which is another app that, you know, Remax offers. So I use that. Um, you could schedule a couple of things. I don't over schedule because I still like to do um, literally in the moment Instagram versus later, later gram, <laughs> you know, posts. Um, so that it kind of forces you to engage and talk to everyone as well, because that is. Hey, Judy's freezing now. If um, someone reaches out, in, another nice way to organize is to maybe um, have sort of like a pre-template written out for you know different types of conversations to start off with um, because everyone knows like everyone's instant and they need some sort of answer right away. So that's been a good tool. Um, of course, there's also iMovie that you could use on your iPhone. I, I just use that all the time, really simple. Um, you know, so that's creatively, uh, I love Canva as well. You could also download that on your phone to do quick, uh, you know, just quick graphics as well. Um, Updater is another app that I've started to use. Uh, I'm not sure, Michelle, you're nodding. Um, it's a nice app to use in terms of so when it, your client is ready to, just before they're ready to move in, you could send it out. It's done for you. It's got Remax branding uh, and it just reminds them gently to update their you know, postal address, uh, their utilities. So, you know, from that end creatively and then organization for my clients have used that as well. Amazing. And uh, for Ravi and Judy, I know you've mentioned uh, the Google apps quite a, quite a bit. For, for our peers who really haven't used the Google suite, um, do you ever use like the collab feature where you can share docs and work together with your teams? For me all the time. Yeah, yeah, Kevin, especially with Alicia, who's my administrator, you know, we can go in and just, you know, do everything from uh, deal tracking to, uh, you know, um, uh, prospecting, uh, monitoring, like it's all there, right? And mm -hmm. it's real time. So like for anybody who's not familiar with the sort of Google uh, environment, um, when you're on, uh, you know, your phone and you're looking at it, you can actually see when someone else who has access is also on that file um, and it, like you know one person will be blue and one person will be pink and you can just kind of see what's do, being done real time to um, a cloud-based file it's 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 so much better than sending over a file via email getting to it opening it up sending it back right it's just it's just a better way to do business yeah perfect thanks thanks for uh going through that ravi i appreciate it uh, again there's a lot of peers out there that you know, it's never used that before. So being able to hear that uh, is great. Uh, and lastly, Skyla, how about yourself for uh, apps for productivity and scheduling? Yeah, similar to Judy, I love Google Maps. You put in exactly the showings that you want to request for the day and then it kind of maps it out for you. So you're not really wasting any time. A uh, big one for me is showing time. Um, it's helpful on the, you know, the buy side and the list side. The buy side, if you're not uh, able to pull up MLS or anything. You can check if a property is, you know, under contract because most of the time it is by the time you, <laughs> you uh, request it these days. And then on the list side, um, with the amount of activity we get for showing requests, um, there's the, I don't know, it's a new feature for me that I've started using is the mass alert option uh, where you can send out a mass alert to everyone that's requested to see the property, you know, for future and for past. So, instead of, you know, having to email each agent, you know, your offer wasn't accepted or highest and best is due at this time, you can just send out one message and it gets to everybody. That's amazing. Um, I haven't heard any of you mention Google Calendar in particular, but I know that's a big part of the Google suite. I'm just curious, have any of you, are you, any of you using Google Calendar to do official invitations to your clients for appointments? So I do. Okay. Yeah, I've started implementing that. Um, again, your your clients are pretty busy. We're pretty busy. 
Um, so I'd like to do like 30 minute or 15 minute consults, which is why the home buyer questionnaire, the home seller questionnaire is helpful. Um, you get their email, you could then invite them. And now it's locked in, you know, so that you don't overbook yourself. So yeah, I'm a big fan of Google Calendar um, and Calendly as well. So you could also add that to Facebook or Instagram or your link tree. Yeah. Yeah, Calendly, Kevin and I both use to book trainings. And um, if you're not familiar with that, there's a free version of it, but it syncs with your Google Calendar. It will automatically, it also syncs with your Zoom account. So if you're going to do a Zoom appointment with someone, the minute that you send them the link to book availability based on your calendar, and when they do, it'll automatically generate a Zoom link if you've got it set up that way. So that's great. How about you, Ravi? Yeah, so on that topic, I, I, I think it's worth mentioning, Michelle, like, I always felt it would be a little too formal uh, prior to the pandemic to book every call. And I say, you know, especially like a past client who, you know, uh, say, hey, you know, we got another little one on the way. We want to get a bigger, like, you know, it felt almost too formal. And then I realized how, um, you know, how, how important it was to sort of manage time during the, the pandemic for us in Ontario. Like we've had over 400 days now where it's just been a different type of, of, of city and, and province. So, you know, I started with Calendly and I started with Google Calendar more so probably around this time last year and every call. So someone calls me and I say, hey, I'm in an appointment. Are you available? And they say, sure, let's talk. Uh, whenever's good for you. I say, okay, how about two o'clock? And then a calendar invite goes up. And also for me, my wife has a pretty, um, you know, biz, busy um, uh, schedule and business as well. So managing household responsibilities and managing work responsibilities, if I'm sort of available on call all the time, it doesn't really work for work-life balance. Now I know, like I live by the lake at two o'clock, I go outside, go for, you know, my 20,000 steps, make um, two hours worth of phone calls and come back. Right. So I, I think for me, I looked at it like, oh, I don't want to be that type of um, unavailable agent prior. And everybody really just appreciates that professional agent that books calls. Right. And you know what? Now you're not missing each other. Now everybody's got a sync time that they're going to be on, just like Judy said. No, I like it. Skyla, what calendar app is your favorite? Do you use iCloud well, I, or Google? So I actually use Do app, it's called. Um, I think that, it, how's that spelled? It's just do with an exclamation point after it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, for me, it's just the easiest to schedule everything together. And there's reminders that you can, um, display on your home screen. So I just find that much easier to plan everything, schedule everything. And then you can always, um, also attach it via, I do group text with my clients. So they get, they get to see what they're needing, whether it's from a lender or an attorney or anything like that. Wow. That's great. I've never heard of it. So that's it. And it's good. There's client interaction. Uh, something else too, a lot of you may not realize Google calendar, especially is integrates with a lot of other apps and a lot of other platforms. So whenever you have that opportunity to do that, you should definitely take advantage of that if you use it. Okay. Uh, thanks everyone. Let's talk about, let's take a little bit closer look at your CRMs and managing your database. What particular apps or programs do you have that help you manage your contacts, stay in touch with them, and uh, share some of your tips from there? We'll start with you on this one, Skyla. Yeah, so a big thing for me, it's not necessarily an app, but I, when I meet with my clients, I first encourage us all, you know, especially if there's two, two sets of clients to I always am a fan of group text. Um, it's easier for me to keep everyone on the same page in regards to what we're looking for, what our price point is. We've changed location, we've changed area. It's easier for me to keep track of what both people want, you know? So it helps me to send out an update to each person, you know, if this is needed, if that's needed. So I, I'm a huge fan of, uh, of group chats for keeping track on all that stuff, yeah. Do you set any limitations for yourself on that though, where, especially when it comes to offers and going back and forth where you would prefer email over text? Um, no, it's really whatever they're comfortable with. Um, a lot of my clients definitely prefer texting. I think it's easier for them, especially too, if they're at work, 
uh, just shooting over a quick text instead of getting into their email. Um, but e either way, they're, they can reach me either way, but we, we tend to know and go with the group text, yeah. Okay, well, it's in writing. That's what's important, right? <laughs> That's what you need. Okay, thank you. So Ravi, what do you do with your database on a regular basis? So um, I will say that the most common question I ever get asked is, Rav, what CRM do you use? Like agents seem to have this fascination with CRM. And I'll be honest with you, Michelle, I'm not very um, organized with regards to like start my day, open up my CRM and plug away. I've tried that. I've tried, um, um, Buffini has a really good one called Referral Maker. I've tried iExact. And I just find that that's not how I'm programmed. So what we do is we have a, a strong touch program that runs throughout the year with different campaigns. Um, so for example, we're doing these um, unboxing um, sort of porch drop-offs for Canada Day with like s'mores and, 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 and you know, Canada to, uh, face tattoos for the kids, that kind of stuff. We're gonna check mark that those tasks and projects throughout the year are done via Excel and, and Google Sheets, nothing, nothing crazy. Um, but it works, right? So I, I, I think I could benefit from a CRM, but I, I think I'm just not, maybe I'm just not the CRM person. I, I don't know. It doesn't work for me. That's but we, okay. run a, we run a thriving business. I, I swear we do. You know, it's just <laughs> without the CRM. Well, and that's perfectly fine. I mean, they say the best CRM is the one you're actually going to use and you've tried and you just, it just didn't speak to you. So that's okay. You know, just as a quick reminder, those of you in the Ontario Atlantic region, you have Lead Street by homes.com that's included in your Remax tools. And in the US, we have Bouge. So you do have something at, available to you. Um, it's not required that you use it, but it is certainly there for you. And uh, CRMs comes really it comes down to personal preference. So thanks for being honest about that. <laughs> okay, Judy, let's talk to you about what do you do with your database? So just like Skyla, I have to agree my clients for day-to-day. -day, so if you're in the middle of a contract, day-to-day -day group texting works. Um, if it's a little bit more detailed of information that they might need, then uh, the group email works. Uh, but I, I have to admit, I, I have jumped over to Bouge. Um, you know, it's, it is a pretty great program. I have to admit, it was a little bit tedious um, in the beginning. So there, it's, there are um, extra things that you can use with it, you know, adding the tags. Um, what I particularly like about it, if you use it, if, so I, we, in the US, I don't know Skyla if you use this, I do use the form uh, plus for contracts. Um, and Bouge has a feature where you could link Zip Form Plus to um, Bouge so that you could really ba basically track everything. So you sort of have a timeline of um, your contracts, your contacts. I don't like to use the word leads. I'll call them clients um, looking for homes or looking to sell a home. Um, but Bouge has a nice feature where it reminds you of their birthdays, their anniversaries, um, so you, you almost have to step away from doing your day-to-day -day and then working on the Bouge platform. Uh, so I find that part of managing, uh, you know, CRM on Bouge pretty helpful. Um, I've started, when the, I shouldn't say I've started, but I have noticed a bigger improvement in terms of newsletters and emails um, through MailChimp. I could be mainly because of the analytics and for some reason haven't figured out why, but it's the deliverer. The deliverability has been pretty good with that. Um, and then old fashioned WhatsApp, you know, and texting like Skyla. No, that sounds really good. Um, I'm a fan of MailChimp. It's been around for some time. Is it still a thousand free sends for that? It is. Okay. So it's, yeah, it's, it it's going to give you more robust newsletter features than you might get in Bouge or another program in house. So I, that's something to certainly look into. And like Judy said, great analytics behind it. I see a couple of questions about Lead Street. Lead Street is not a lead generator. It's a CRM and a database program. And uh, it is accessible through Max Center. And if you're still using Launchpad, you can also get to it through there um, in Ontario Atlantic. Uh, so, all right, uh, back over to you now, Kevin. Uh, we do have Perfect. some questions. We'll take questions here in a minute too, by the way. Thank you. For Perfect. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, so for our next question, uh, I know we touched on it a little bit about talking about, you know, Facebook, 
using Instagram, but what are your favorite social media apps and how do you use them? So, you know, for personal, do you, do you post personal stuff on it or do you just stick to, to business? Uh, do you use it to engage uh, with your audience? Things like that. Um, so Ravi, I'll have you uh, start this one. So the new one for me is Clubhouse. Um, you know, that's a, sort of a great place to mastermind. And, uh, you know, there's some great uh, uh, rooms that are happening in Clubhouse for real estate and for non-real estate. Um, but that's a, a new app that I'm, I'm sort of tinkering with. Um, haven't seemed to figure out TikTok, uh, but that's another social media craze right now. Um, I've got some colleagues in my in my office who say, Rav, like, you're you you're definitely the guy for it but i don't know <laughs> i haven't quite figured that out yet um maybe it's maybe maybe my age is showing a little bit there um instagram uh certainly that's where uh, uh social media i probably spend the bulk of my time connecting i will answer the other part of your question my belief kevin is um you know there's only one ravi uh, ravi is you know happens to sell real estate but there's only one you know, person. So I don't sort of have this multi uh, pronged approach to my social media presence. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a business page for our team. And I'm certainly on there, you know, once or twice a day, but um, my, my life, whether it's uh, a view of, uh, you know, uh, the sun set or, you know, uh, something funny that happened uh, on the way to work or, a just listed, just sold, uh, price reduction, a virtual open house, it's the same thing, right? So, it, you know, I, I don't really split the two. Um, and then other than those three, um, um, Facebook, obviously, and and uh, and LinkedIn. I mean, that's pretty much the, the gambit of uh, social media, I think, for any real estate agent. <laughs> Thank you. And, and I know um, a lot of people have the questions about, you know, do I have separate accounts for personal and business? you know, what, what, what works better. And I think to your point, you know, it, it is about personal preference of if you want to have one, it's sort of a dual purpose profile versus, you know, having these multiple profiles uh, with your point, I see the advantage of having the dual purpose profile of, you know, people see what you do for business, but they also get to know you as a person and see who you are uh, as well, which is great. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll say this to you. Um, the clients that I attract because of my authenticity online also mm -hmm. helps me when I meet them face to face, because it's the clients that I want to attract because they feel kinship with who I am as a personality um, uh, uh, online. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I feel like if I was, um, um, you know, very formal and, and sort of less authentic or maybe all business and no personal um, I might end up with the wrong person sitting at the dinner table looking to sell their home. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Skyla, how about you? Yeah, I, I agree a hundred percent. Um, a couple of years ago, I met, um, an agent who does a lot of talk shows on, um, Instagram. He's pretty huge. He's does a lot of funny content as well, but he had reached out to me and he had said, you know, on Instagram, that's my largest platform, but to, to show your face to people. So to talk, to make, so, you know, not just, you, you know, you post content, you post, you know, your souls, your clients, that kind of stuff, but to have that personal side as well too, so that people feel like they can relate with you um, so that they see, you know, see who it is behind, you know, your social media account. So just yeah. even if it's just videos, talking to people, explaining something, telling them something, it helps them put a face to, you know, who's running that, that page. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Uh, and Judy, how about you? Yeah, I, I agree with all of you and, and I'm sure you guys all have figured this too. I think the more, uh, natural you are, it seems, it seems at least I've noticed when I'm on Instagram or any, any platform, it seems when you make a fool of yourself, <laughs> you know, um, it seems to be most receptive. And I say that jokingly, um, you know, I, I'll do some funny reels, um, a lot of times just in the moment, or you can't believe what just happened. I mean, there's no real, um, there's no real formula, so to speak. I think it's just what connects, you know, you to people in your audience. Um, because quite frankly, you don't know who's going to be watching. Um, so I think just be yourself and just do whatever makes sense for you. But as long as you're just doing it. So when people ask, 
you know, should I be on, you know, this app or this social network? And you know, the, the, the joke is you should be on all of it, but if it's overwhelming, then pare it down. And I, I found myself doing that before I jump on TikTok. Um, same thing. Let me just get into Instagram. I'm starting to have fun with it. Um, and just, you know, just relax and enjoy yourself. Don't read into it too much. Thank you so much, Judy. Yes. And uh, I, I think a lot of people in the in the chat uh, agree as well. You know, Arnella says, so true, being real is important. And I think that is the advantage of having that dual purpose profile is, right, they, they see who you are, they see your personality, and they see this real person versus just, you know, posting strictly business and, and, and nothing personal. So uh, I, I love that. I love that you know, you're all on the same page and are able to share that and be aligned with that. And I, I can see um, our peers in the chat feel the same way as well. Um, Michelle, I pass it to you. All right. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, always, always great discussion on social media and just really the important thing is to not try too hard in social media. It's quite obvious when it comes across that you're really trying to sell, you're really trying to push your own agenda, but I like how you all said, just be very relaxed for sure. Okay, let's just take a quick minute and talk about laptops. What programs or things do you absolutely must have to do on your laptops versus mobile, if anything, but I'm assuming there's a few things. We'll start with you on this one, Ravi. Um, so, not as much as you might think, Michelle. I find that I'm pretty good at getting a lot of work achieved on my mobile device. Um, I mean, I've also got the benefit that I've got someone, you know, we joke about it. It's kind of like uh, like Money Penny and, and, and James Bond. Like you got someone in the office that you can always call and get things done. So, you know, I, I, I do appreciate how fortunate I am to have a great administrator or assistant. Um, even something like DocuSign, which is what I use to do offers, I do it on my phone. I suppose the only thing that um, you know really needs to be done on a laptop for me is probably like when I'm hosting Zooms. Um, you know, like if I'm facilitating a, a larger group, I don't want to do that on a phone where you only see a maximum four people. Um, and then the other thing is when you get to offers. Um, and when you need to sort of do, you know, a proper CMA or, or extensive research, I mean, there's a benefit to having a laptop. Definitely, I can certainly see that. And just having a bigger screen sometimes is easier on the eyes, right? <laughs> yes, yes. There you go. Judy, how about you? What are your must do's on your laptop versus mobile? So, yes. Yeah, so even though I, I live on mobile, uh, but I, I will admit I have my laptop on pretty much every day. So I still do my contracts on the on my laptop. Um, still a fan of Zipform Plus. I know there's DocuSign and DotLoop that works too. Um, but mainly why I like Zipform Plus is because all the updated documents that you might need, um, you know, when we had the COVID release or, you know, the seasonal rentals, it's on Zipform and it is a bigger screen. Um, I've used Megaphone as well for when, so I'm a solo agent. So I do a lot of the background work as well. Um, so I use Megaphone for new listings uh, that might come up. Um, the other thing that I've started to do just because the market has been ridiculously, unbelievably busy is so I travel with my iPhone, of course, all the time, but I'll turn my iPhone into a hotspot if I can't find Wi-Fi available. And so then if you have to whip up a contract really quickly or you're trying to do a listing agreement really quickly, um, you can do that just, just in case you can't get Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's one of the best investments yeah. you can make because if you need to just, like Judy said, open up your laptop, you're in your car, um, the hotspot is a great investment. Typically, it's going to be 20 to $30 more on your cell phone bill per month, but unlimited data, I mean, it's worth it so much. So thanks for saying that. Skyla, how about you? What do you like to do on your laptop? Yeah, so very much like Judy, I still like to write all my offers on my laptop when I can. Um, and right now on the listing side, you know, we get bombarded with, you know, offers these days. So keeping track of them is huge. Um, so when I get an email of offers, I send them to a file. That way I, as soon as we get them, they can be sent over. And then once, you know, the, you know, we present them to our clients, but 
Um, I saw someone a few weeks ago at the office and at this point, it's gotten to the point where you kind of have to write down like an Excel sheet of like all the offers in an order that you think, you know, the seller, you know, should consider first, you know, and, and all the perks about the offer um, because, and then just send that along when you go over all the offers with the, with the seller, because it's, it, it's hard to keep track of them all too. And they're all great. So to be able to like physically look at each one and point out, you know, this aspect, that aspect, it's better to have it all in front of you. Fantastic. Thanks. Um, still a couple of questions coming in. I see some of some of them have been answered. Some questions about Updater. That is a it's a digital concierge service for moving address changes, unfortunately, only available in the US. So very sorry. Uh, we have a partnership with them at Integra. We've asked about Canada. Um, they're exploring it. That's all we know at this point. But um, maybe there's something similar that Ravi knows about that we don't. Uh, there was a question, Ravi, about the quickest way to check the MLS from mobile for Toronto. Yeah, so there is an actual um, Stratus app from Treb, and okay. I do that all the time. Um, you know what? We've also got um, like a proprietary um, uh, uh, app from my broker that, that I do use a, quite a bit as well. But I mean, MLS, right? And it, it's fully accessible archive listings, um, the entire TREB history, and um, it's a free app. So 100%, that's that's the way I would go. Thanks. It looks like there's an app called MoveSnap in Canada. It sounds like it's similar to Updater. That's awesome. I, I just learned something new. Um, I'll have to check that out. So thanks for those of you, Tanya and Ria, and a couple of the others that mentioned it. Okay, Kevin, over to you. Next thanks, question. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, so let's I'll move on to question non-business. Um, when it comes to non-business related apps, uh, are there any favorites of yours? You know, whether it be a, a mobile game. I know uh, you guys mentioned, uh, you know, meditation apps that you'll use in the morning or in the evening. Um, anything like that. Uh, Skyla, we'll start with you. Yeah, I'm always a fan of a funny TikTok video. <laughs> Like I uh, communicate a lot with my family these days by just sending videos that I think they would find as funny. Um, Ravi and I, when we had talked last week, had mentioned the Peloton app. Uh, mm -hmm. I use Peloton every day. <laughs> so, but yeah, and I use Headspace too for meditation. And and Ravi, you were saying that there was a Remax Peloton group. Was it? Was there? Yeah. So in, on Peloton, there's different hashtags, and there is one called Remax Realtors. Um, and there's, there's a bunch of different sort of, uh, uh, remat, uh, remax hashtags or, or, or groups on, on Peloton. I think there's at least three, <laughs> excuse me. And, um, you know what, I'm, I'm the same person everywhere at Ravi Singh Remax. So if you're on Peloton, uh, come find me and you can see if I'm working out or not. <laughs> <laughs> doing your, doing your 22,000 steps, right? <laughs> you know what, Peloton. So. I've had some uh, surgery, so so uh, because of scar tissue, like a bike is not the best piece of equipment for me. And I had so many people saying, get on Peloton, Ravi, you'll like Peloton, there's great music, there's great instructors, but I thought it was just for biking, but there is strength, body weight, yoga, meditation, cardio, hit, running. I mean, it's, to me, it's it's sort of the, the best of that breed. And, um, you know, it's a little addictive too. Yeah. Well, uh, are there any other apps that you use, Ravi? Um, yeah. So, uh, you know what? I do outside of business. Let me just take a quick look here. Um, so obviously we're in the lockdown. So I'm just taking a look at what I've used the most frequently, but <laughs> skip the dishes and Uber Eats are up there for sure. Um, <laughs> Uh, TikTok is is great. You know, it's just kind of like mindlessly um, uh, swiping up. Um, we have kids, so Disney Plus uh, is is a new app that we've we've used a lot, and uh, obviously Netflix and and uh, Prime. And you know what? Um, I also play music, so um, I have a, a a DJ app that I use for. Um, uh, basically uh, being able to mix music without uh, headphones and a mixer. And I also play classical music. So I have something called Nagma Live, which is for Indian classical music. So 
you know, there's a there's a lot of there's there's a need for storage, Kev. There's definitely <laughs> for, for an upgrade too. <laughs> Got to get that bigger storage. Yeah. <laughs> And Skyla, I see your point with TikTok, you know, it's, I feel like it, in, in some aspects, it's consumed my free time as well. You know, these 15 second, 60 second TikTok videos can turn into a very long time <laughs> if, it, if you're I, on there. I mean, I don't even know how to use TikTok in regards to posting. I haven't quite figured that out yet, but I love watching everybody else's videos. I yeah. guess been there for longer than it <laughs> And uh, Judy, how about you? Uh, any uh, non non uh, business related apps they use? Yeah, same I, same thing like you guys. I'm I'm on TikTok, but not an active user. But I'm I'm a participant. Um, if I need something funny, I I just it's like an hour will go by, or maybe not an hour, thirty minutes, and you're still on it watching funny videos. Um, I still use the iPhone Health app. So I'm trying to get rid of all this carbon sugar weight that I somehow accumulated over the year. Uh, so our health insurance company here has um, an app called Active Fit. So I sync up the health app with the Active Fit app and there's like all types of activities you can do. So I'm pretty simple right now. Um, I tried the Peloton app when it's nice out, I really do like to be outdoors and go for a hike. Um, or just walking. Ravi, I'm not like you. I can't, I haven't gotten my 22,000 steps in. I, I've gotten 10,000 steps and I'm already, you know, rooting myself on just to be able to do that. So those are the non-related apps. Um, I still use WhatsApp. I think it's been helpful over, you know, the pandemic. Um, you know, there's just all these different groups that you could still connect with friends. Uh, so pretty simple. And and Ravi, since you shared your Disney, I have my I have my Hallmark. Yeah. Hallmark app. That's great. So you know what, Ravi, I have to think about R four when you mentioned twenty thousand steps because every time I'm there at the convention, I always open up my app at the end of the day, and it's in the twenty thousands always or thirty. I mean, one day it was thirty. I was like, wow, this is crazy. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, so lots of great comments, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, uh, someone mentioned Netflix, of course. That's always good. Um, here's a question for all of you. Wait, let me see what's come in the Q&A box. Uh, let's see, it looks like we've answered a lot of these, just trying to clarification on some of the others. Oh, there is a question from Harmon about, for Ravi, do you use Google Workspace or the normal Google Suite, Gmail Suite? And do you have a custom domain for your team? Yeah, so I have a paid, um, uh, I believe it's called G Suite. Um, I'm not sure if it's called Google Workspace or if they rebranded it, but I do have a paid account with them. Uh, every um, seat on the account, I believe is like $5 a month or maybe six. And um, that's what we use. And it's it's increased uh, storage, it's customized URL. So, you know, we have basically the vanity URL for our, our email addresses. Um, it's a, it's a small investment and a massive return. I would say like all day go for the, the, the actual business, um, suite from Google. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Um, and we're putting a lot of these in the chat box. We'll make sure we include this in the follow-up. Um, yes, it was recorded, which is good. Uh, so here's a question for the panel that I, I could not wait to ask them. Okay. We're going to start with you on this one, Skyla. If you had to go 24 hours without your mobile device, what would you do with your time? Hmm. A lot of thoughts come to my mind. Um, honestly, if I could have my phone not for the day, I'd probably, it doesn't sound fun, but just be able to stay home, open the windows, put some music on and clean. <laughs> You know, there's so much stuff that you don't, you're not able to get to the piles of laundry or whatever it is because you're so busy, but just to like blast some music and get some housework done for me anyway. Hey, that sounds therapeutic. I, I'm right there with you. <laughs> All right, Ravi, how about you? If you had to go 24 hours without your mobile device, your iPhone, what would you do? Um, probably a lot of productivity stuff. So I'd, I'd go for a run. I would... Um, do a lot of reading and do a lot of journaling and um, I would actually just be really engaged with the people that I love without uh, any push notifications because and by the way I've turned them all off because it's just this constant barrage but um, you know what uh, 24 hours by about 15 I might be kind of going through a bit of withdrawal but uh, you know definitely just focus on, on on a little bit of me time and a little bit of family time. That sounds great. 
Thank you. Judy, what would you do? Yeah, same thing. So I was thinking about that, the 24 hours. Uh, so I would say maybe seven or eight of it, I'll be resting. I'll be sleeping. So that's okay. Um, the other time, I'm like, I'm really a fan of the lake. Or, well, now we haven't been able to go to the beach yet because it's not warm enough yet. Um, so I'll do something like that to really turn off, um, go for a hike, um, you know, and and sometimes I'll tinker and just like Skyla doing some housework, which I know sounds boring too. Um, and, you know, cooking, that sort of thing, uh, some DIY projects, nothing but like really to turn off, you know, um, and now that things are sort of opening up again, now you could really get together with friends and family again. That sounds wonderful. It sounds like all of you would just do the simple things that you don't necessarily get to do. And because our mobile devices can be distracting and, you know, Ravi said it best, um, they should never, never take a priority over your loved ones and your family. So I think we all struggle with that. I know we all struggle with that. Uh, myself included, Kevin, we feel the same way. And sometimes you just have to stop and appreciate nature and some of those great things. So that's awesome. Uh, looks like Seema said she would love 24 hours to be able to cook and bake and relax. <laughs> Thanks for sharing Seema, we like that. Uh, looks like uh, any other questions, Kevin, that we missed before we wrap up? I don't see anything here. Yeah, I think we've addressed all the Q&A ones live. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I think, I think that's it. All right, so let's bring this home. Um, really, ultimately, are there any last minute tips that any of you have, all four of you, including you, Kevin, for all of the Remaxers watching about using their mobile device in their business? So we'll start with you, Skyla. I think the biggest thing was it took me a while to figure out what exactly works for me because there's so many things out there and it does take time, it takes research to really just figure out what works for you, how you wanna market yourself, how you wanna market your business, how you wanna plan throughout the day. Just, just take time because it does take time because there's so much, just figure out what works best for you. Thank you. Judy, what are any final thoughts? Yeah, I agree too. I think with your mobile device and all the social apps, um, don't feel overwhelmed that you have to use all of them. Um, maybe focus on one first and like Skyla experiment, you know, you'll, you could talk to a lot of different social media experts and they'll say that a lot of times it's experimenting. Um, Katie Lance is, you know, big fan of hers. I think she has a saying that goes something like, and Katie, I'm sorry if I'm going to botch this up, but you know, done is better than perfect. So at least just get started, get it done. You can refine later. Um, and uh, that, that's it. Just get started. Thanks. Ravi, final words. So Michelle, th this business is the exact same business it's been for, um, for a long time. It's just got different tools. And you know what, the more you realize that it's a belly to belly um, conversation engagement based business, the better. Don't hide behind, uh, you know, social media and say you worked all day. And don't, uh, you know, overcomplicate it, right? Engage with people, deliver value, and just use the tools of 2021, which is your cell phone. Well said. Kevin, any last words from yourself? You're on mute. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Uh, to, to add on to what's been said already, I think the question that I get uh, most of the time is, you know, is so-and-so is using this worth it is is using this app worth it at the end of the day it's that uh, to, to Skyla's point see what works best for you uh the question of is it worth it won't be answered until you try it and and see if it does um and if it doesn't try something else right uh, it, it's it's all about diving in and um uh having the the courage and Again, we, we all have the ability to, to, to use all of these apps and to download it. A lot of it is free. So take the time, you know, d dive into it and, and see if it works for you. Uh, that's all I can say. Thank you. My final words and advice would be whatever you're doing, ask yourself this question. Is this going to generate more business for myself? So it's very important that you're spending time on the right things at the right time, never losing sight of income producing activities. Thank you everyone so much. Thank you, Judy, Ravi, Skyla. You guys were awesome today. Thanks for sharing with all your peers. Yes, big applause. 
Uh, we will be back for the Remax Business Builder Series on June 1st, building a robust referral network that promises to be an incredible session. But everyone, please give a shout out and thank you. Keep our panelists in mind for referrals in the greater Toronto area for Ravi for in Connecticut and I think the entire New England region for Skyla, she covers it all, <laughs> and Judy in New Jersey. So thank you, everyone. We're signing off, and we'll see you on June 1st. Take care.